Hello and thank you so much for joining me today for another thought from this absolutely incredible book, The Bible. Last week we started a, a new series here on YouTube looking through a very, very well-known psalm, verse by verse, line by line. And, and this is what I love about the Bible so, so much. You can read a passage a hundred times, a thousand times, and there is still new life and new encouragement and new inspiration to be found there within it. I cannot tell you how many times I have read through Psalm 23, but in the last few weeks I have found myself falling in love with it all over again and I feel like every single time I read it there is something new to discover, some new precious pearl of wisdom found within it. I'll put a, a link to this series, a playlist for this series in the description so if you missed the last video or if you want to watch all of them once they're all released you can do that but, but all of them are standalone videos, you don't need to have seen the previous one to get something out of this video. So the next part of Psalm 23, the next line or two says this, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Now I've always found the language used here to be quite interesting. He makes me lie down. Not, you know, he, he gently suggests that I might want to lie down in this green pasture. It doesn't sound like there's much of a choice here. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Now last week in our first look at Psalm 23 we talked a little bit about David, the king, the author of this psalm and has his experiences as a shepherd when he was a, a much younger man as well as the, uh, the general unruliness, shall we say, of sheep who, who don't necessarily always recognise the best thing for them. And sometimes I think that we can get so caught up in thinking about the things that we don't have that we fail to recognise the goodness of the green pasture to which God has led us. Now life has been incredibly busy lately for myself, for my husband Dave here living in Liberia and it's felt like we have been running from one thing to the next thing for, for weeks without really having the chance to stop and take a breath. And you know I can tell that I'm um, are quite a bit closer to 40 these days than to 20 in, uh, in that 30s decade because you know at the weekend what with the busyness and the stress I don't know I managed to to slightly twist in some way that my body didn't like very much and uh, and it led to having quite a painful back for a couple of days and so instead of starting my day as I normally do on Monday with a little bit of exercise I decided you know what, I'm just gonna take a, a gentle stroll instead like that might help to loosen things up a bit it's probably gonna be a bit better for my back so you know hobbling a little bit um, around the compound and at first as I started to walk my thoughts were marching on at, at a rate of knots say we're just streaming away everything I needed to do and how to do things with this silly back playing up and the, the giant to-do list looming ahead of me. But as I walked, I looked up at this beautiful sky. See behind me at the moment it's, it's quite grey and that's how it's been for the last few weeks because we're here in the rainy season in Liberia. But on Monday, 
the sun was breaking through the clouds and the sky was blue and it was absolutely beautiful and I was hearing the birds waking up to this stunning sunrise that was taking place right in front of my eyes and I paused in that moment and looked around at the beauty of the green pasture that I found myself in. Occasionally, just occasionally, I think that, that God needs to take slightly more extreme measures to make us stop, to make us lie down, to take a pause and to recognise his goodness in our lives, to recognise the beauty of where we find ourselves, even when we're in a time of hardship. I'm not saying that God caused my back pain, but maybe, just maybe, he took advantage of it to bring me to a place where I needed to be. And on that day, I continued my walk and it, it led me beside the ocean, which wasn't exactly what I would call quiet waters. We've had some big storms out to sea and it's churned up the water. But behind the beach is a beautiful lagoon. And rather than hurrying on home as I normally do when I'm walking on the compound, I decided to backtrack a little bit and go there. And, and I just stopped for a few minutes. And I watched bright yellow weaver birds darting across the water. And I watched some kind of heron flitting around in the distance. And I found in that moment that my soul was refreshed. The break in my normal schedule, a little bit painful as it was, forced me to stop. It forced me to metaphorically lie down, to take note of the green pastures. And then the quite literal leading to quiet waters, it restored me in that moment. And these are not always literal things, you know? There's not always gonna be a quiet little stream that we can go in and sit by for half an hour and just enjoy the peace of that moment. Sometimes that's not going to be possible. There won't always be a green field that we can lie down in, hopefully without being eaten by fire ants, which would happen if I lay down on the grass here, I can tell you. But metaphorically, God is always ready and willing to lead us to a place where we can be refreshed, be it physically or mentally or emotionally or whatever it is that we need in that moment. But I don't think we're very good at this. I don't think that we are very good at letting ourselves be led into a place of quietness, of stillness. We prioritize, glamorize even, action, doing something, achieving something with our days. And that's why I think that that wording is there, because just sometimes God can't do anything but make us lie down. Just, you know, force us to take a little bit of a pause. But it's wonderful. It's amazing when we can open our hearts to God, when we can turn our gaze to him again, and when we can let ourselves be led. God knows us better than we know ourselves. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. He knows what we need. 
He knows when we may need to take a moment in our busy schedules to be refreshed, to be restored, to be renewed again in his presence, to stop the relentless pursuit of whatever it may be in our lives, work or busyness or relationships or social media, whatever it may be, he knows when we need to simply be led to a place where we can breathe again. He refreshes and restores my soul, my life, says the amplified version of that verse. He renews my strength, says the New Living Translation. You let me catch my breath. The message paraphrase puts it. Do you need that today? Do you need new strength? Do you need to catch your breath amidst the craziness of this world that we find ourselves living in? Do you need to be refreshed and restored today, right now, in this moment? Let yourself be led to that place of quietness and stillness. It doesn't mean that you have to go somewhere right now, though I always do find that the beautiful scenes of nature do help me to focus in again on the wonder of creation and, and therefore the wonder of the creator. But you don't need to go to a physical place. All you need to do is take the time and the space, even if it's only one minute, to say, okay, God, you know what I need. Please lead me anew to the stillness that only you can offer. And if I really can't be led right now, if I'm really not listening, then make me rest because I can't continue to function without that divine refreshing and restoration that you so freely offer to me. There is so much more that we could talk about in this psalm. We could go on for hours. We only have a little bit of time today. So I hope that that was an encouragement to you. I hope that you can find refreshing and restoration this week in the presence of Almighty God. And we will continue working our way through this psalm with a new video on Wednesday next week. So I will see you then.